This is probably one of the most important things from Dr. Upman's book that I read. It's called The Christian's Handbook of Science and Philosophy. This one, I would highly recommend to buy this because this is Dr. Upman's critique against the higher education system of the world. But he uses it from a biblical standpoint, which is extremely eye-opening. Now, he has a table here, which is perhaps the most important part out of everything that he wrote in this book. So in this table right here, he goes through the history of science and philosophy compared with the Bible. And it is intensely amazing and interesting, actually. So this will probably take a long time. So this is why I'm going to make up most of the teaching through this uh, table chart that he has right here concerning about the history of science and philosophy. So it is extremely interesting right here. Now, the Bible says at 1 Timothy, in chapter 6 and verse 20, Beware of science, falsely so called. Amen. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8 shows you, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Philosophy. So the Bible warned you a long time ago about these two wicked things that the world will use to destroy all of mankind. It is science, falsely so called, and it is philosophy. These two things have been one of the most damnable things that destroyed all of mankind. Now, let me say this. To increase in wisdom is nothing wrong. And science, studying the workings of the universe, is nothing wrong. But in a humanitarian, a humanistic standpoint, without a biblical standpoint, is full of errors and wickedness and danger. Because you got a logical reason to justify your own feelings of what you want to believe. And that becomes extremely dangerous. Because you have an intellectual, educated standpoint where you can justify whatever you want to do. So, concerning these things, the Lord warned you. But as you look throughout the beginning of history, ever since the B.C.s to the A.D.s, look at history. Look at history. So I will give you one of the biggest, the record as it stands, written from Dr. Upman's book, very interesting. 3000 BC, worship of the sons of God, Genesis chapter 4 through 6, as a means of evolving. So look at this. This has never, look at how these two forms went from beginning to the end. This is intensely interesting. Worship of the sons of God as a means of evolving into higher forms through sexual relationships between angels and women, angels and animals, and animals and men and women. Now, everything is going to be different in form, but you're going to notice that there's the same foundation and ideal that matches with today. Okay, so pay attention what you're hearing and see if, man, this sounds like today. I want you to pay attention, okay? So that's 3000 BC, Noah's flood. We've seen that. 2300 BC, sodomy practice as a natural result of a pre-flood religion, specifically connected with Ham. 2000 BC, sodomy practiced where three conditions prevail. Pride, abundance of idleness, and fullness of bread. Does this sound like America today? 2000 BC, uh, 1900 BC, God gives up the Gentiles as nations and turns them over to the lust of their depraved natures. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, Romans chapter 1, and claimed kinship to animals. 1500 BC, see nothing changed. 1500 BC, all pagan nations adopt the worship of the gods and connect animals with them so that many of the gods are part animal and have an animal, calf, ox, snake, crocodile, whale, etc., to represent them. All the scientists are wrong as usual, as well as all the philosophers. Amen. 1200 BC, nations call the constellations after animals and apply astrology to the planets worshiping the sun, moon, and stars, and all the hosts of heaven. All scientists are wrong on all points. 1000 BC, 
the wisest man in the world shows up. That's Solomon. And sums up all past, present, and future philosophies in two books that comprise less than 200 pages. All the philosophers within range come to hear him. That's right. Read the book of 1 Kings. All these philosophers, teachers, scholars went to hear the wisdom of Solomon to give debates, discussions, and all that. Come to hear him and go away. And what happened when these philosophers come to Solomon and hear him? They go away determined that their Gentile forefathers and Gentile grandchildren should get, should get the credit for the wisdom God gave to this Jew, Solomon. 800, hey man, don't look at me like a tree full of owls. You ever went to these liberal school classes? You ever notice that they're saying, well, oh, the people who wrote the Bible, they borrowed it from blah, blah, blah. You see that? Look at this. So There is so much wisdom to this. So much wisdom to this. Okay, I've got a lot to read right here, but I'm going to read all of it, okay? This is going to be good, okay? 800 B.C. With the five books of Moses and two books of Solomon available to Phoenician seamen, these books, or their contents, are distributed worldwide by copying or by means of word of mouth to every inhabited country in the Mediterranean area and much of Ireland, England, and the African coast. See, God's wisdom was long before the other people caught up with that. It was already spreading. 600 B.C., the Greek philosophers. So what do you mean the Jews got their ideas from the Babylonians, huh? This was long before. You got five books of Moses and Solomon already writing his works. Look at this, man. Look at this. Uh oh, you Christians learned it from us. You Christians learned it from us. Ah, wrong. You learned it from the Bible, fool. You learned it from the Bible, you fool. You just want to hide it, man. You just don't want to admit it. 600 BC. Okay, here we go. This is the birth. The Greek philosophers immediately claim that they are the thinkers and begin to formulate hypotheses and state state beliefs on creation and the pre-deluge civilization. All of them are wrong as usual. Amen. 500 BC, the Greek philosophers, Ionian and Italian schools, all hypothesize that matter is eternal, which it is not, wrong. that men came from animals, which they did not. That, doesn't this sound like America today? That there are many gods that should be honored, which there are not. Doesn't that sound like America today? Your God is the same as my God and comes in all. Shut up, man. This is, this is a world. That the original element was water or air, which it was not. And that there was no physical resurrection, which there is. That's found at the book of Acts. Acts chapter 17. Paul preached about the resurrection. And then they said, there's no resurrection, the Greek philosophers. Paul was there when those big shot philosophers that you hear about today, those guys were there and they heard Paul speak to them. Not one right, not one time in a thousand. 300 BC. Did philosophy and science uh, improve lately? The Bible was unchanging. You notice that? It never changed. Philosophy and science, they keep changing and changing. Why? Because we're trying to get better. We're trying to get better. No, it just shows how stupid you are. Amen. It just means that you made another mistake. <laughs> That's what it means. <laughs> 300 BC, the philosophers and scientists decide that men come from fish, which they did not. <laughs> that there is no judgment at death, which there is. That several gods were involved in creation, which is not so. That morals are relative, which they are not. And that no one can get to hell, which they can. 100% error, 100% of the time. <laughs> Amen. I like this. See, this is so much wisdom in just plain language right here. 100 BC. My goodness, did mankind learn their lesson? The philosophers and scientists decide that matter is evil, which it is not, that everything invisible is good, which it is not, uh, let's see, uh, and that a man's conduct has no bearing on his afterlife, which it does. This means that by the time of Christ, over five million people who attended schools or were exposed to any type of higher education, other than the Bible learning in Israel, because that's where real philosophy and science is at, 
had assimilated 3,000 years of error coming in one polluted stream of nonsense and ignorance without let up or relief. Amen. Look at this, see? We see the Greeks right here, and then we see the Gentiles right here, and then we see the Sodom and Gomorrah right here, and then we see what? Genesis 6, the sons of God. And guess where it's going to end, folks? Sons of God again. Yes, see, it's going, it's going. But during this time, you had Solomon. Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. Their books was long before Babylon. See? They were way ahead. But you know what these stupid Gentiles did, these stupid liberals? Oh, they learned it from us. They learned it from us, you know. Okay, let's see at the ADs. It gets better, right? It, it, it gets better at the ADs, I'm sure. AD 100. The philosophers and scientists all agree that Jesus was not God manifest in the flesh, which he was, that he did not come up bodily from the dead, which he did, that the apostles were deceived, which they were not, that the Old Testament had not told the truth ahead of time, which it had, that man did not have an immortal soul, which he does, and that there is no heaven or hell, which there is. Batting average for 500,000 innings, zero. A.D. 400, the philosophers and scientists decide that babies are regenerated when a Catholic priest sprinkles waters on them, which they are not, that the world will get better and better till the kingdom of God comes, which it will not, that Mary was the mother of God, which she is not, and that Catholics should kill Bible believers who don't teach that the pastor is a priest. So you see right here now, the world just gets better and better. We got pagan Rome that messed up. And then now we got the Catholics. You got to realize the Catholic Church was the one who consisted all the scholars and the manuscripts and the teachers, the priests and the clergy, they all had to be well learned. You see how the world gets better and better? It just gets better, folks. Burning people at the stake. Just gets better. We evolved from the BCs, man. We're not like Sodom and Gomorrah. You see Sodom and Gomorrah right here, man. You think that this is uh, progressive. No, man, yeah. You, you got to, okay, I, forgive me. I'm going to say, this is the meanest thing I'm going to say. If you're a progressive liberal, you're the most stupid person on this side of the universe and out of all history. Amen. That's right. Okay, I, I'm, I'm not going to say anything more mean after that. But see, look at the, just look at history. Then you'll see how stupid they are. Look at history. Now, don't look at me like a tree full of owls. Why don't you study history? See if what this man said was false. He's digging you up facts from history. And if you doubt it, just study it. That is what they teach. Greek and then Sodom and Gomorrah and all that. And then the Roman and the Catholics. It just gets better and better as time passes by. Okay, let's see right here. The philosophers and scientists were teaching that the Pope was the vicar of Christ, which he is not. That you should pray to dead saints, which you should not. That Bible believers were heretics, which they were not. That there was a Holy Roman Empire, which there was not. And that you could go to limbo or purgatory, which you cannot. Batting average for 600 billion <laughs> innings, zero. <laughs> I'm not lying. He wrote 600 billion <laughs> innings right here. AD 1000. The philosophers and scientists taught that Jerusalem belonged to the Pope, which it does not. That you can manufacture Christ's blood out of a shinny and white lightning, which you cannot. <laughs> and that a dragon was out in the Atlantic Ocean waiting to get you, which he was not. <laughs> AD 1400. The philosophers and scientists, uh, let's see right here, taught that heretics should be burned at the stake, which they shouldn't. They taught that you could pray people out of purgatory, which you can't. They taught that humanists who attacked the Pope were demon-possessed, which they weren't. They, uh, they attacked Galileo. They taught that all Jews were Christ killers, which they weren't. And that it was a sin to read the Bible in your own language, which it is not. So look at this right here, how the scholars and higher education, they always messed up. They always messed up. A.D. 1600. The philosophers and scientists were teaching pantheism, atomism, atheism, naturalism, and agnosticism, none of which are scientific, and were teaching that man is the measure of all things, which he is not. They taught you you can make gold, which you can't, that every European ruler should obey the Pope, which he shouldn't, and that America belonged to the Catholic Church, which it doesn't. A.D. 1800. 
The philosophers and scientists were teaching that life came from dirty sweatshirts, which it doesn't. <laughs> That life came from dead meat, which it doesn't. That the state was God, which it isn't. That people and animals were midgets inside eggs before they were born, which they aren't. <laughs> that Mary could hear four million, four million people pray at the same time, which she can't. <laughs> you, can, you can tell Dr. Upman was having a lot of fun writing this. <laughs> And you guys think that I'm mean. You guys think that I'm mean, huh? You think that I'm childish. Oh, my goodness. Uh, bring back Dr. Ruckman from the dead, man. I just want to hear him talk about this. And that there was no devil, no hell, and no physical resurrection, which there are. See, A.D. 1800. We just got better, haven't we? So you notice right here that during the French Enlightenment, 1600s, 1700s, during the French and Ger French Enlightenment, German rationalism, and then the progression of technology and science, etc., etc., just got better. Eh, wrong. Okay, that's 1800 now. We went from the sons of God, Sodom, Gentiles, the Greeks, and then the Mediterranean, and the Roman Catholics, and then now the different European countries, French Enlightenment, German rationalism, English deism, and then 1800. Now let's see 1900. God help us. 1900. The philosophers and scientists were teaching that animal life came about spontaneously from lava that cooled into hot rocks, which it didn't. That new species can be produced accidentally by the passage of time, which they can't. That energy never wears out no matter how much is used up, which it does. That the universe was eternal, which it is not that reptiles turned into birds, which they didn't, that the geologic strata took millions of years to be laid down, which they didn't, that the earth was slung out of the sun, which it wasn't, that the moon was slung out of the earth, which it wasn't, that war was glamorous and desirable, which it is not, that God created nothing, which he did, that there was no heaven, heaven or hell, which there is, that apes and... <laughs> that that apes and monkeys gradually lost their hair and turned into men, which they didn't. <laughs> and that, <laughs> See, gra when you add that word gradually, that's not so it sounds scientific all of a sudden. It sounds like you should take this seriously. <laughs> and that everything gets better and moves upward and forward automatically, which it doesn't. Box score after 500 million, etc. in innings. The Holy Bible, 500 trillion? Man, that's a lot of zeros. 500 trillion. Science, zero. Amen. Philosophy, zero. Amen. Where any real progress was made in either field, it was done in line with the Bible. Right. For example, Gregor Mendel or in going to the Bible for a lead, for example, Sir James Simpson, or in doing something that did not contradict one verse in either testament. These include Pasteur, Curry, Salk, etc. Look at all those scientists and hear their stories of how many of them believed in God and also how many of them actually read the Bible and discovered and made a scientific discovery from reading the Bible. Wow. Okay. A.D. 1988, the scientists and philosophers were teaching that all nations should be mixed, which they shouldn't. That war was the greatest problem man has, which it is not. That all religions should get together, which they shouldn't. That man was going to conquer outer space apart from God, which he is not. That there is no life after death or existence beyond the grave, which there is. That men came from monkeys, which they do not. That to get across the missing links, an explosive burst or surge was required, which must have come from outer space, which it did not. That the humanoids and super beings on other planets have our welfare at heart, and if contacted, will help us out and show us how to live, which they will not. 82,000 plus. So he's giving a prediction here. The scientists and philosophers will teach that we worship the sons of God under the Antichrist at Rome and Jerusalem because they were the authors of higher life on this planet as we know it, which they were not. 
that animals can be helped in their struggle to evolve to higher forms by having relationships with men and the sons of God, which they can't, and that by electronic control of all individuals on earth, peace on earth will at last come with no more wars, with no more wars, which is a lie. There are three world wars coming up after 2000. This man had a brain right here, man. Amen. Summary. After 5,000 years of rejecting God's, word and, uh, God's words and God's word, science and philosophy are exactly where they were in 3000 B.C. before the flood. All the researches, all the experiments, all the hypotheses, all the theories, and all the breakthroughs went in a circle and arrived at the starting point. Right. We progressed, we went right. No, we go back right here, man. Amen. Arrived, breakthroughs went in a circle and arrived at the starting point. You know what he says right here? Worship of Satan and demons. That's right. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1 through 5. Chapter 10, verse 20 through 21. The terminology was what misled the suckers into thinking that something intellectual or scientific was going on. There was nothing going on throughout the entire 5,000 years. What a mine. What a mine right here. This is the God of this world that they worship. Yes, sir. This is the God of this world that they worship. Okay, for people live streaming, this is mankind. See, this is mankind. Jesus says, need a little help there, sinner? Need a little help there, sinner? And then the guy, you know what mankind does ever since the BCs? No, I'm fine where I'm at. I'm fine. I'm just fine where I'm at. Even though he has a leg missing, accidents all over. We're progressing better and better and better. See, that is the world. That is the world. That, look, that is mankind, amen? He wrote the, he drew the, he drew and wrote and preached and taught the truth right there. That's a lot of wisdom right there. That is a lot of wisdom right there. You know what mankind is? Ugh, oh, we're getting better and better. Oh, oh, I'm dying. Oh, we're making progression right here. And then he, only, he has one arm missing, and he's blinded by both eyes by the God of this world. And Jesus says, hey, you need a little help there, sinner? Yes, sir. Cast off your own pride and self-righteousness, your good works. Humble yourself, repent as a sinner, and say, God, I need to accept you. Your shed blood on the cross of Calvary, I got to trust in that for my salvation. No, I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. And then when you tell them you're not fine, then they say, hate speech. Hate speech. Arrest them. Ah! Is that, you think I'm kidding you? That's the liberals. Look at the facial reaction of people when Trump became president. Just look at them. You thought that they die of a heart attack, man. That's people. You think I'm exaggerating by my facial expression? They do that. They do that. Wicked, sorry, good-for-nothing people, man. Jesus, come quickly. Amen? Amen. All right. I enjoyed. Uh, that was my highlight of the night. All right. Let's close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for a book that's unchanging and a God who never changes. And because of that, your, your wisdom never changed. But the philosophy and science of this world has always changed. And what they've got and what they've accomplished, they got it from your book, Lord. They got it from the mind that you blessed them with. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that we will take our gifts that you have blessed us with and take it seriously where we don't use it for our own humanistic benevolences, our own selfish, fleshy gains, but rather for the glory of God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.